You are looking at a construction vehicle that is being resurfaced out of the river up there in the Baltimore Harbor, right next to the dolly ship in the background with the containers on it. And there's the twisted metal of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Those are the trusses there in the background. So this was underwater, and they are salvaging it now. And you can see the water draining out of it. We don't know where this video came from, but I doubt that it came from the Unified Command because it wasn't on any of their press releases. And they haven't really given us a whole lot of information whenever they've recovered anything related to the construction vehicles or the workers. But here it is being lowered onto a barge. I don't know which barge this is. If I had to take a guess, it's probably the Chesapeake 1000, but I'm not entirely certain. Well, guess what, folks? The conspiracy theory people, they're going to have a field day with this story. Because, as you know, they like to bring in their ignorance with them into the comments. And you know what they're going to be saying. They're going to be saying, look at that truck. It looks brand new. Where's the damage on the truck? Why is there no damage? How come the bridge is all twisted up and everything, but yet there's no damage on that truck? This thing's fake. You know, well, guess what? I answered that on a previous video on this series here a couple of weeks ago. See, we all by now know this famous scene here from the stream time live. So there's the collapse. There's the construction vehicles with the yellow blinking lights on the right side of the center of the span going into the water. So let's take another look at it much slower. Look at the blinking yellow lights as the bridge is collapsing there. So there's your vehicles, they're going down and it just looks like they're going in real easy into the water. So let's take a look at it now a little bit, we'll step through it. And I just wanna bring us up right up to the point where you can see right here, all of the construction vehicles and the lights are blinking. You can see the yellow flashing lights on them, right? So they're working, everything's still functioning even though the, even though the bridge is collapsing. The vehicles are still sitting right here and the yellow lights are still flashing on them. No problem. There's your four vehicles. Still no problem. This one right here is probably 40, 50 feet up in the air. But look, as we get closer and closer right here, I can see the yellow light is still blinking on this truck. So they're all still fine. There's nothing wrong there. And even the road hasn't collapsed there. I think it's going to land in big solid pieces. So again, the first vehicle is still here. You can still see the blinking lights from these. So they haven't even impacted anything yet. And then now the first one is in the water. And it was probably gently kind of set down on the water because the roadway here, which is suspended, has taken up a lot of that force of the collapse and the crash into the water. So these guys are sort of just along for the ride. And the vehicles are still lined up there as of right now. And there's the little bit more advanced this one right here is maybe what 30 feet up this one is still back here and then as you can see the road is going to kind of come in at an angle so now the other vehicle is in this one's still there and pretty much it just rides it down it's not like it plummeted like the truss sections did they plummeted and that's why they crushed when they hit the water too okay and, and remember they're a lot more weight a vehicle hitting water at that height from like right here as the road is hitting the water is not likely to see a whole lot of impact because the water is basically going to splash out of the way. Army Corps of Engineers just released this yesterday. And then two days ago here on April 16th, this was the second of the two large sections of the bridge truss that the Chesapeake 1000 crane had pulled up. Now on the 15th, they pulled up a larger section that's about 450 tons. They announced yesterday that this piece here is about 350 tons. So it was a bit smaller than the other one. So now I'm speeding this up for you so you can see exactly what they had to go through here to maneuver this second large piece of the truss and this whole process of just making this 90 degree turn here took about seven minutes. And then they're going to barge it off over to Sparrows Point where they have that 10 acre site and they're going to drop it off there and then dismantle it piece by piece. And then here is a video that was released yesterday 
by the Army Corps of Engineers showing that second bridge truss section that was brought into Sparrows Point. So this one was actually excavated on the 16th. So that was two days ago and here it is pulling into port there at Sparrows Point with its cargo. And they're about to lower it onto the five acre site there for dismembering. And here is another view from the Army Corps of Engineers as they remove that second large section of the bridge truss. And they begin to escort it all the way over to Sparrows Point. Now I've sped it up for you here. And keep in mind while they're doing that, you know, the Corps of Engineers are still busy with the clamshell dredge buckets. They're going down in that water and they keep coming up with more and more debris. Still working like gangbusters, cutting up all the other sections of the bridge trusses in preparation to get them moved out of the way. And they just keep on bringing in more barges and more cranes. It is crane central there, man. This almost looks like the city of Dubai. But look how many cranes it takes here. They, they start attacking these different sections of the bridge truss to lift them up out of the water in order to get them out of the way and clear this channel. And they sometimes have to work in tandem to lift up all of these trusses out of the water. And here's some photos that the Army Corps of Engineers supplied. And you can see here, look at all of this pile of debris. And look, they actually have some corrugated sheet metal there too. And that's what it looks like when they're transporting it over to Sparrows Point. And when they get it there, they catalog it, they film it, and then they start processing it. And the enormity of these scenes is incredible because that crane is really tall, sort of misleading. And of course, the metal shear machine is still going at it. He's hungry. He's eating well tonight. I don't know why they don't remove these leaning containers first, because you would think they were precariously perched and get them out of the way. Well, at least they've got the situation contained. And then check out how many guys it takes to work on one of these just to get one lifted off. That's pretty amazing. And then check out what these guys are doing. So you can see these guys have been quite busy. And when you look here at what they've been doing, look at this truss here from the bridge. So they've already sliced through all of these here and the upper portion above the water has already been removed. So now this is on the southern side of the dolly because remember the bow is right over here. So they're working like gangbusters here to get this channel cleaned up. It may look on the outset like it's somewhat slow, but these guys are moving pretty good. Now, there was a coincidence here with Don John Marine. That's the company that owns the Chesapeake 1000 crane that they brought in here to pull up these bridge trusses, right? So let me show you about this. And then reflecting on this dolly collision, this sort of reminds me of a shipwreck that we had that was very famous locally here and maybe even a little bit around the world. And of course, in this lighthearted story, it was Don John Marine that turned out to be the savior in this whole saga. Back in 1984, I was actually in college at the time when up in Palm Beach County, we had a Venezuelan freighter, the Mercedes One, blown in by a freak storm and it crashed into the seawall of a Palm Beach socialite, Molly Wilmot, who was a department store heiress. And this was all over international news and it was major local news. It was the talk of Palm Beach to have this big old freighter washed up in your backyard like this. And Molly Wilmot, boy, she took it in stride too. She was a very nice lady. The press loved her. She was always telling everybody she has a new Mercedes parked out back. She was famous for giving sandwiches to the crew and drinks to the news media. But guess what? Don John Marine showed up and saved the day. It supposedly took almost 100 days to get that ship out of there. She was stuck with that eyesore for a couple of months. So this was indeed quite the media show there, as you can see. And the ship was eventually towed offshore from Fort Lauderdale, where it was scuttled with 350 pounds of dynamite. And there it goes in the background there, leaving Molly's backyard. So what started on Thanksgiving weekend in 1984 dragged on a good couple of months all the way into 1985, into January, till they finally got it freed in February. Now here's something else that's kind of interesting too here that will jog your memory as well. Oh, this just keeps getting better, folks. 
What are the odds of getting two major stories out of Palm Beach County there and two properties side by side? Because what do you think is right next door to Molly's property? So there's Molly's house right there. There's the Mercedes, of course, the Mercedes one. And what do you think this is right here, folks? Does this look familiar to any of you? This is the Kennedy estate right next door. And the Kennedys have owned it since 1933 there. But what do you think happened on this estate that created such a national news? It was another one of those trials of the century when William Kennedy Smith, who is the nephew of Senator Ted Kennedy, was accused of doing the unthinkable to a woman that they had met at the Aw Bar, a famous bar in Palm Beach at the time, and brought her back to the estate. And supposedly he took advantage of this woman. That was the allegations and that was the trial of the century there at that time. This was before the O.J. Simpson trial. Although William Kennedy Smith was acquitted because he claimed in defense that it was consensual between two adults. And since it was hard to prove that it was anything other than that, since the prosecution could not prove beyond a shadow of a doubt, the jury ruled not guilty. But what are the odds that in this area right here, you have two major national news stories that took place within a few years of each other? Oh, and just a reminder, if you're enjoying this video, be sure to watch this other video that I did in the FIU bridge collapse. You will love that one. One of my best ones yet. And then check out this other video here also on how to install laminate flooring in your house because I do all sorts of engineering projects here for you. So thanks for joining us today and we'll see all of you on the next one.